Let's talk through that price floor example. This was one of the activities I had planned the last one. We didn't get to it in class, but given the skills you developed in class, of course you developed them in your prep at home and exercised them in class, uh, you'll, you'll be able to follow this no problem and replicate this analysis when you need to, say on a quiz in a week's time, just for an example. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I guess, um, according to this graphic anyway, that the energy input to energy output is uh, less than one, that ratio for um, ethanol. But, but notice that corn, it, it, that ratio is, is very unfavorable, especially compared to sugar cane. Um, and, and that's the point I was making. The, the ratio, is, it's the shale oil extraction up in Canada that, that you've, you need more energy in than you get out. But the advantage you gain is, is um, that you produce gasoline that can be moved around, whereas the energy in can come in the form of coal or whatever. Um, we need to power these cars individually around the road, so we need energy in, in its portable state for given current technology. That perhaps is changing, let's, let's hope. Uh, all right, let's get on to that example. So I'm building off this same supply and demand for prunes example. And um, now we're going to say that the U.S. Department of Agriculture wants to help prune farmers. And they, the $4, price that would, $4 a pound price that would prevail in the market isn't enough. We want to help farmers. We're going to um, institute a price floor at $5. And what's the deadweight loss? And we need uh, some institutional detail. We're going to suppose that the price floor is implemented by means of a quota where the government restricts production rights to make sure no more uh, prunes than are demanded at $5 a pound can be, can be produced. And uh, sugar, uh, sorry, not sugar, um, peanuts and tobacco actually are, are regulated in this manner uh, in the United States. All right, onward we go. Uh, I've got, I went back and made a base case graph. I should have had this so I could, in, in class today, that would have been handy. Thank you, Eleanor, for pointing that out. Um, here we go. We've got a price floor now, and uh, that price floor is at, I guess I need a pen, that price floor is at $5 a bushel. And notice that at $5 a bushel, there's lots of farmers that would like to supply prunes. This is 2.5, 100 million, 250 million, is that, that's what we call that. Um, but that's the quantity supplied or the quantity that farmers would like to supply, but now only 100 million pounds of corns are demanded. So that, and that's all that would get exchanged at a price of five, uh, five dollars, hence this quota allocation of production rights. And, and what the, the government typically does is when it institutes such a program, it grants the quota production rights uh, to people that have grown prunes in the past. And, you know, in the, in the minute after that quota, that production right is, is established, maybe that's not too bad of an approximation. But over time, you know, there's no way the government would know what the, who the low-cost producer, what the low-cost acreage is to produce prunes. There, there's no way the government can t keep on top of that. And so the, the inefficiency of a, of a price floor managed this way would grow over time simply because the government wouldn't be able to identify the lower cost producer that emerges and, and the quota rights would be handed out potentially to inefficient producers. We're going to assume, though, that the government hands them out to the efficient producers just so we can get this graph to work unambiguously. All right, so there's the price floor. Only one million are purchased here. We're going to do the same thing where we look at consumer surplus, producer surplus, and total surplus. We're going to look at the market outcome. We're going to look at the price floor at $5 a pound. And then we're going to look at the change. We're going to make up this handy table. Before I can start filling it in, I need to label areas, but that's easy enough to do. Do try this at home. Uh, we've got the 
equilibrium price and quantity, we've got these areas A, B, C, D, E. And so we go in the market outcome, consumer surplus area under the demand curve above the price line, A, B, C. Here, um, the producer surplus at the area below the price the area above the marginal cost curve, that's area D, E. We could take these areas, they're all triangles, but in the interest of time, we're not going to do that. We'll just refer to these areas. Um, under the price floor now, things change, right? Let's change color pen, go to orange. Now, got this price floor, only one million are transacted. Uh, producers get $5 a bushel, and of course, consumers have to pay that. So consumers are the losers here, uh, they have to pay uh, $5 for less prunes, and um, they're unambiguously worse off. Producers are, are a little bit different uh, story. They Producers have gained area B, that's due to the high price they can now charge for these prunes, but they've lost area E, and that's simply because some people that were able to sell prunes um, cannot now. They don't have the quota rights to produce as much as they want. Uh, let alone even as much as they produced in the market outcome. Uh, and then, oh, I went straight to the the change. I jumped jumped a bit. I'll come back to that point. Um, producers get area B, D in this outcome. A, B, D is the total. Consumers lose B, C. Now I caught up to where I was before. Producers gain area B, but they lose area E because they can't sell as much as um, they did under the market outcome, nor they, can, can, they certainly can't sell the 2.500 million pounds, the 250 million pounds they'd like to sell. We count up the welfare change, positive B, negative B, cancel out. We're left with negative C, E as the dead weight loss. If we want to calculate that, Remember, the quantity units are in 100 million. So uh, we have a, this triangle. It's got a height of 3 and a base of 1. Or you could look at that differently and say it's got a base of 3 and a height of 1. 1 half times 3 times 1 times 100 million. You get to 150 million dollars per year. Now, um, hopefully that was one of the ones I had as an option. There it is. It's option D was the right answer. And uh, I think I have a prettier answer key coming up next. Oh, I, it's a prettier graph, but I, I saved the tabulation for this exercise. And so let me back up one step. Oh, I, one thing I did that, um, in the word processed example that I didn't do here was highlight dead weight loss, that area there. And notice another way to talk through dead weight loss, the, the market outcome was, took place at, at 200 million uh, pounds of prunes a year. The, the price floor limited uh, output to 100 million, and all those... That, that million, 100 million pounds of prunes that didn't get produced, every one of those was valued at higher than the cost to produce yet. And so when we, when we move to a policy where those don't get produced, we lose the chance to achieve this value by allowing the prune market to function in the United States. So that's the welfare loss of this policy. I guess there's one more thing to say. Uh, notice that farmers gain area B and lose area E. And here it looks like it maybe is a tie. Um, you know, it's, it's somewhat ambiguous. Uh, in the real world, uh, agro the, the demand for agricultural commodities it tends to be very inelastic. And um, that is very steep. And in that case, when you've, you're facing a steep um, demand curve, Area E turns out to be pretty small, and an area like B turns out to be pretty big. Go ahead and do that on your, on your own as an exercise. Work through a price 
floor example, but um, have a, a very steep demand curve relative to the supply curve and, and see if you can verify that this rectangle B is bigger in area in that case than this triangle E.